So in the previous videos, we actually made a whole React application from scratch and I'm super proud that you have followed me till here. Now let's have a little discussion about React hooks. Basically, nowadays people don't prefer having class-based components. Class-based components seem to be quite an overhead and uh, functional components are relatively easier to understand and easier to create as well. So, but the fact is that functional components do not provide every, every feature that class-based components provide us. For example, it does not provide us the, uh, the feature of having a state. It does not provide us the feature of having class, uh, the lifecycle methods and so on. But using React hooks, very simple, React hooks are those simple methods that helps us use the benefits that class components provide uh, in the functional component. So yes, basically you can do everything that you can do using class-based components in functional components. So the class-based components, basically they are implemented through a class, functional components whereas are implemented through a function. Class-based components use JSX to produce content, uh, content, but they have a render method through which they return the JSX. Functional components directly return a JSX. Class-based components have state to update and the content and data. Functional components, whereas, use the hooks. They use use state hook to actually update the content and data. Class-based components have lifecycle methods. We haven't discussed the lifecycle methods in this project. We will probably in the next project. But yes, lifecycle methods are uh, something equivalent to lifecycle methods can be produced using use effect hook in the functional component. So each and everything that a class-based component can do, a functional component can do as well. So let us have a look at a very simple hook, which is use state. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I am going to quickly, very quickly convert my app.jsx to a functional component. Before that, let us start the local server because we closed the local server in the previous video. So yes, what I'm going to do is very quickly create this class app into a functional component. So uh, let us have a look at here. Uh, so again, the simple method is going to be the same way. We are going to create a function, uh, uh, ES6 arrow function. And from that, we are just going to return. Let me copy and paste this thing to return this. And simultaneously, let me check whether this name it is work working or not. Yes, this is working. So yeah, let me, uh, so this functional component returns this, uh, uh, this this JSX but we don't have this state and all these things here what are we going to do is we are going to import use state hook use state hook from react react provides us with use state hooks which allows us to use state inside our functional components so now we are very well going to copy and paste this handle input change as well the same thing and the only thing that is going to change is how we implement the state. Let me uh, open it at the right as well to see what the state elements are. And let me tell you very simply. So the only drawback with use state is we cannot have a complex object to contain every state element. For every state data piece of state, for every piece of state, we will need to have a separate piece of state and a separate setter function. We don't have a single setter function here. So let's do it. Let me tell you the simple syntax. We can probably discuss more about this in the upcoming projects in the upcoming months. But yes, just to give you a simple example of how React hooks function uh, works, basically, they return a sort of array with a sort of value and a setter as of for that value. So I am going to keep, first of all header text. So I have to uh, add a header text state. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add this. This is called array restructuring and I am going to do the same thing. So now the thing is instead of set state, we will be using set header text. So the only different, the big difference here is that instead of a common state and a common set state, we now have different pieces of state and different pieces of setter methods. Now we are going to use a use state and in the first parameter of use state, we are going to provide the value of 
the initial value, the default value of that component. So now header, state, header text is very well done. So we can very carefully remove this header text from state to here. Now, very similarly, let us do the same thing for, uh, let's say first header expanded and set header expanded equal to use state and the default value is true. So now in here, I can very well use header expanded instead of this dot state dot header expanded because now we don't have a state object we just have this variable header expanded and similarly instead of set state i can just pass i can just call my set header expanded to be a negation of input text and that took care of this thing and just one final thing remaining now const of suggested names and set suggested names inside this i'm going to use state to initialize it as an empty array and now and now i'm just going to cut it out and delete this set state and use set suggested names to be this thing and just one final change here i am going to remove the state as this and now we don't we no longer need this keyword because this is a variable a variable inside this function itself and now we can safely delete our app component class based component and as you can see we are done we safely converted our class based component to a functional component using hooks and let's see if that works code that works very very well everything works so yes the simple way to convert class-based component into a functional component was to remove those class and all uh, keywords, to remove that render key uh, function and directly return. And instead of using a big state object, we have to use state directly for every piece of state using use state. So that is it for this month's project. I hope you liked it. Again, if you liked it, do like, share and comment, trust me. It takes a lot of time and effort to make these videos for you guys. If you like them, please do share with your friends as well so that they can also uh, learn from it. That's it. But I have a homework for you. Imagine that this name function, this thing here, uh, this name function, imagine if it was a network call. Imagine if it was an API call, then it would make it very, very expensive. We cannot simply do this for every now what you see is for every key press we call that name method and propose some new names so but we can't do that if it was an api call otherwise it would uh, it would make our app very slow what how would you make it more efficient in that case your hint is use debouncing so just check it out and see if you can implement it on your own that's it. Do subscribe to my weekly newsletters, the lean letters, and do subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash the lean programmer. It was amazing to build a project with all of you guys completely from scratch. And I really loved it. See you next month in the second episode of an app a month. Bye bye.